are still watching Prime Morning, and like I said earlier, it's time for us to delve into what the news papers have for us. I guess our seated and poised for the conversation representing the NDC this morning is lawyer Philemon Ala. Good morning, Philemon. Good morning, Radiant Rose. <laughs> Thank you so much. I like the consonants in the Radiant. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I don't know, there's something in the system. There's a bug in the system. I don't know who else is experiencing it, but Isidua has caught a flu, and this morning I woke up, actually started last night, and there's just something else. But, hey, we still go. We grind it. We grind it. Nothing's going to put us down. So, we're here. Blame Nana Dwayne they are responsible. I can't blame anybody. <laughs> I can't blame anybody for flu bag in the system. <laughs> anyway, representing the PNC this morning. Now, he's the aspiring general secretary, and we hope that you will vote for him. So, please, if you're a member of the PNC and you're voting, consider this man because he's able to do the job. I will do it, Shaq. Good morning. Good morning, Rosie. How are you? I'm fine, but I could have been better. Yeah. We'll be fine. God day. <laughs> God day. God day. God day because uh, we are campaign promises are a lot. And so uh, election year, everybody is given a campaign promise. As to whether it's achievable or not, we don't know. Uh, but we are, it's quite surprising that you hear the sitting governments actually campaign promise where you have the GRA come in to, you know, fight what the sitting government has said. And you ask yourself, they're supposed to be working together. So what is going on? Or where did we go wrong here? Anyway, let me quickly read what the newspapers have for us. And then uh, we'll have our third guest joining us who's representing the NPP this morning, Ebene Zanate, will be seated very, very soon. So I'll quickly read what the newspapers are for us. I'll start with the Supreme newspaper, the Supreme. Ahoy drops hints, Fante Confederation planning to eliminate Mahama? Well, there's a question. I think I saw the story trending yesterday, and I was just wondering why this will actually be something that... Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's even come out to explain and uh, apologize. He didn't mean what the newspapers are trying to... But what did he say? All he just said was that, uh, well, I think what he even said is not material. Why did he even say? What he said, I don't even want to go into it, but what he said, I think, does not reflect the bread and butter issues in this country. We're in a country where inflation is at the highest but why did in the he of this even country. Say? I mean, like, the point is that what he said is just a tangential issue. Why should it be a front page story of a newspaper? The question is, why will you even say this in the well, first place? He's apologized. Looking at, look at, looking at the state of the economy, looking at it being an election year where we have barely eight months to go vote, why will you say this? He has apologized. I believe he, 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 he's come to realize the... Well, we are waiting for his apology in the he newspapers, has, he has. just like we've seen... What's for the newspapers? These poor MPP newspapers will not capture the apology. They will not. But the fact is that uh, Mr. Hoy has apologized. I want to see the video of his apology or a letter of his apology. Oh, then the statement is out. It's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah statement. I, I'm hoping to see it and then probably tomorrow we talk about it. Um, good morning, Honorable Ebenezer Nati. Good morning, Rosalind. You look fantastic. Thank you. I'll hatch. I'm, I'm learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing is that people always blame Nanado and Baumia on issues. Mm. But when they are making it in courts. The clients are coming in and they are making their money. That's why they forget that they, one. They don't blame it on another that you are bringing me too many clients. <laughs> anyway, uh, we continue with the Supreme newspaper. Kujun Safwa Poku for Vice is a question here about what we have to announce in April. We are all waiting to hear who will be the running mate for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Ghana records highest medal haul in history, yes. And we got 68 medals. We've done well, actually. And this is why we are saying that, you know, the, the quote-unquote, where we actually claim some of these games are the minor games, are the games that probably we should start looking at. I'm wrestling. Over 40 medals are there. If, if we didn't win these medals, you can only imagine how many medals we would have won. So we won 68, and only arm wrestling won over 40 medals. And kudos to the team, actually. But for now, it looks like we are still not there yet for Olympics. No athlete has made it so far. But we are hoping that, you know, they'll try again. Well, John Paul is Joe Paul, sorry, Joseph Paul is trying. So let's see if he'll go again and then he, he'll get, get the time to make it for the Olympics. 
Court orders the new IMC to take over Adamus Ghana operations as legal wrangling drags on. New tour board will turn refinery into a profitable enterprise. And that will be all for the Supreme newspaper. I'll read the Daily Analyst next. The Daily Analyst. 2024 elections, Ghana needs problem solvers, people with integrity. And this is coming from Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. To safeguard water bodies, welcome CEIA call for repeal of Section 17 of Minerals and Mining Act. Kofi Sapo unveils soul-staring single Yehoa featuring Diana Hamilton. And, you know, we are excited about it because it's been a while since, you know, Kofi Sapo released a song. So we know this is going to be great. Anything can happen. Be prepared to be president. Kwesi Ahoy apologized to Mahama, says he misspoke. Okay, so the apology is finally here. Yeah. So the, this newspaper suggests seems to be credible. <laughs> <laughs> politics. Ah, uh, successful 2023 All African Games. Ekufuado lashes out on naysayers. Central Oil Refinery touching lives through CSR employs over a thousand people. The Economy Times newspaper FDI declines by 139.4% in 2023. Erratic electricity supply, PURC demands load shedding timetable. It's not just PURC, they are spokespersons, so yes, it's PURC. <laughs> Ghanaians. <laughs> the PURCs are a uh, spokesperson. So it's beginning to look like Doomso is here. Oh. But it says it's not Doomso. Ghana's economy valued at 841.63 billion. Ghana cities. The next newspaper I'll read is the New Finder newspaper. The news, the New Finder. Sorry. I'll be more accountable to Ghanaians, and this is coming from Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Coastal communities are grateful for sea defense project. Announced running mate to kill intense lobbying. This is coming from Coca. And historic medal hall, Team Ghana justifies decision to host games. Uh, you know, uh, the Commonwealth Games, we still don't have a host. Though. So people were asking if Ghana should bid for it. Do you think Ghana should bid for it? Gentlemen, honorable, do you think Ghana should bid for the Commonwealth Games? There's no host as of now. For me, I think um, it, is, it will be too early for us. But we have, we have there. Yeah, but um, it's not only about the um, the other disciplines, but it's the football. Okay. See, most of our uh, our parks that we have are not to okay. uh, a good standard. More, there's some of the pitches are not all that good. Um, I've had opportunity to be at Accra Stadium during the other twenty matches. Mm -hmm. All the other four or five matches have been there, and I can see there's a lot of improvement for us too. So. For me, I think that, and where we have gotten to with our, um, our economy now, to I think that, I mean, we should, we should, we should, they should give, go and give it to South Africa. <laughs> the Ghanaian publisher newspaper, five shortlisted for Baumier's running mate. Okay. Hey, we see some ladies here. Kosia Fremo Pare, Kojo, Isafua Poku, Irina Toshi. Well, let's see. The future holds. At a male's fate. And by my name is not Pat. No, your name is not Pat. <laughs> then add my name to if it. If I want to know Well, they, they actually <laughs> gave us yes three, so I'm wondering who the other two So are. you, uh, so maybe if you have read a story, you can find my name too. If you don't find my name, just add my name. Okay. <laughs> let, let me, the, the, the names here are, the names here. Akosi Afreba Oseo Pari. Dr. Yao Oseo Duchu. So Akosi Afreba Oseo Pari is actually the, um, her position, class. Chief, of chief of staff. staff okay, uh, Dr. Yao Ose Educhum is actually the minister for education. Irene Natoshi uh, Adolati. Uh, we have Kojo in Poku. Kojo is a friend actually, and uh, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe. They are all vying to become the, the vice, uh, actually the running mate for the NPP's Black Bear. That's Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. John Kuma could have been part of this list, but for something. God, 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 God knows best. God knows best. God knows best. Tanzania energy <laughs> team understudies NPA. Uh, at a male's fate can befall Mahama. We see Ahoy tells Na not to get ready. Mm. <laughs> well, there's an apology here, though. So. <laughs> 13th African Games, Ghana records highest medal haul in history. I'll do the, the Daily Graphic newspaper next. The Daily Graphic. President ascends to contracts bill. Act prohibits 
compound interest payable by state. See Russian Threatened Defense War Project and Graphic UPSA sign MOU to promote a business. All right, so we have here Ghana sweeps its highest medal haul in African games. And that'll be it. So the Daily Guide newspaper is my final newspaper. Daily Guide, Ghana records highest medal haul. Stop misleading public VRA to IPGG's Eliklim. Kwesi Ahoy sparks outrage in NDC. AG spearheads contract criminal justice act changes will turn tour into profitable enterprise and this is what we are all looking for um some entertainment story here we are like electrifies 13th african games yes she did doctor regrets sharing kwame eugene's health status who is this doctor hmm. and um back stories um that's the sports ghana records highest medal hall minister salutes sa satellites princesses for clinching gold and you showcase the best of ghana to the world and that is what it is right here in the newspapers so we are back into the studio and uh, our conversation our very first topic happens to be the campaign promise that came from the flag bearer of the new patriotic party and actually his campaign promise is not as bad as you know it's, it's beginning to look like, you know, where he said that if you voted into power, you make sure that um, your small, should I say SMEs? Yeah, let me put it like that. SMEs and, you know, individual business owners or small business owners will not be paying certain taxes. It will cut across the board. Well, if you look into it or if you do um, probe a bit further, you realize that what he's saying is that the burden on these small, small businesses is too much and it's making them collapse. Hence, during his tenure, he'll make sure that he cuts it out so that business can grow. Now, this did not sit too well with GRA. And GRA says uh, that, and Jerry actually released a statement, so I'll read a little bit of what they said. I'm not going to read all. I'm reading just a little bit. <clears throat> We have, sorry about my throat, eh? please pardon me today, my throat is not the best. We have observed and listened with utter dismay and disbelief reports on the media platforms regarding pronouncements made by the vice president to the effect that GRA is harassing taxpayers and businesses. We therefore wish to respond as follows. <clears throat> sorry, please pardon me would like to state uh, unequivocally that we, the workers of GRE, find this statement unfortunate and consider it as an attack on the efforts of the hardworking staff of the authority, which, if not discontinued, would incur the displeasure of workers, disrupt revenue collection effort, and breed industrial disharmony. We wish to place on record that the unprecedented growth in tax revenue collected in 2023, which yielded in excess 113 billion Ghana cities, is a major factor that has kept Ghana in the IMF bailout program. It is also an undeniable fact that the GRA has since 2020 fiscal year met, uh, in some cases, exceeded the annual revenue target despite challenges of COVID-19. Well, I won't read all, but these are the main issues that GRE is complaining about. So GRE's complaint is that why will the vice president say this? Why? Um, let me start this conversation with, I don't know if I should start with, honorable, let me start this with you. Mm? Let me start this conversation with you with regards to the, should I, I, I don't know if I should call it a banter between the vice president and GRA. It's a sitting government. And GRA's boss was appointed by the government. And so if, the, if GRA has any concerns with regards to what the vice president said, why not just go to the vice president's office, sort it out amicably, rather than dragging the name of the vice president in public? Let me say good morning to our viewers and good morning to my colleagues here. And before I come to uh, the GRE and their statement issued by the Labour Union, let me take this opportunity to congratulate um, the under-20 team, both men and women, as well as the um, other disciplines. 
and as you rightly said, uh, to be, and I'm a victim. Uh, throughout these African games, the one that I show interest is the football. Mm. I never show interest in the athletics, the weightlifting, and the boxing and all those things. My focus is on football. But as you rightly said, our focus is always on the football, and we leave the other disciplines. Yeah. Meanwhile, the 68 medals that we got, about, let me say, over 40. 70% or 75% is not coming from any other discipline that we, we have put much resources, mm -hmm. but rather they have even brought us to um, the sex on the, on, on, on the table compared to the countries that participated. And I think that it, it is something that the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the National the Sports Council, should also have a second look at it because many countries also fall on they are a place like U.S. The second uh, sport that they enjoy much and they put much resources is uh, basketball. Yeah. So we also need to look at our second um, uh, sports discipline. I know our second sports discipline will be boxing, but for some time now, um, somebody go and eat oku and then he's beaten. Somebody go and eat um, pepper and then banku, the person is beaten. Yeah. So we also need to look at it. And but let me say kudos to the team and uh, after the under 20 i pray i pray that um the sports council the ministry of youth for the gfa will maintain the team to be honest i in fact i to, i i watch all their matches and i can tell you they they we have they are good players so we'll maintain them to become black stars or what that is my hope but i believe that in fact there are a lot of scouters at the stadium and i can tell you Maybe somebody is watching this morning, the way the person even insulting me this morning, you'd be surprised. They say, ah, now I should still be in Ghana and be giving 500 Ghana cities, 200 Ghana cities, whilst I can make yeah. um, dollars somewhere. And then today, the president in support of the vice president will be launching one student per laptop mm -hmm. um, today, this morning. Um, this is about 500 uh, public schools that we have. They are all going to be given one laptop that they are going to be used. Um, are, are these schools inclusive? Okay. All right. Public schools. Public schools. Yes. Okay. Only public schools. So even those in the rural areas? Yes. That they don't have lights? Oh. The, 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 the laptop, when it's being charged, can take about seven hours. And there's a mechanism being put in place to areas that they have challenges with light. What's that mechanism? <laughs> Fill up it. No, I mean, we are, the people want to know. What Fill, because the people in Kupila, he, he, he hasn't landed. my let village him, of Kupila, I just want to know, land. what is the mechanism him, for people no. in Kupila him, to have access he to He hasn't electricity. landed. So this question you're asking is different if he's it's landed. It's just a direct let question to him to add up. So I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm waiting to hear Please that. let him land. Yeah, let, let him land. Honorable. So measures are being put in place for those in rural areas where there are no lights to also get access to the laptop that will be used. I know that some uh, will be given uh, a power band and others also will be given um, a solar panel that will be fixing some of the screws that can get power for them to So use. they'll give them solar panels? Yes, and then power bands for them to use. But the power bands, you have to How does the power so band give him power to, laptop? That's what I'm saying. That the, ah, so the solar panel, solar panel yes. will yes. be fixing some of the screws. I had okay. the opportunity to listen to the um, contractor who is in charge and measures that have been put in place. Because some of these questions were asked. Mm -hmm. How are they going to get um, light? Those that don't have in the rural areas, how are they going to? Uh, so we believe strongly that it's going to be in a good use. Um, listen to the contractor who is in charge of it. And I hope and believe that the things that they really said, it will come into a realization mm -hmm. that it will not be just um, for giving out sick, but it will be a beneficiary to it. And the last thing. I like that you're saying this. I'm sorry, that's not our main topic, but I'm, yeah. just, I'm just asking a little bit because yeah. you are, you're saying this. What about these children that sit on the floor um, and they, they are going to be given laptops? They don't have access to electricity. Yes, you said that, you know, you give the solar panels and all of that, but they are sitting on the floor. So the main priority is not about the laptop. They, ha they, they have to write on the floor some of them, that's where they write their notes. They don't have, you know, these textbooks and all. Yeah. What about them? Most of the, I mean, when we had a meeting, 
some of these issues were raised, not only about chairs and table, but we also look at some of the... Um, so there's habit. another tree somewhere? Yes. Hole. We look, but they are starting this from the SHS, okay. not with the primary schools. Okay. So, and with the SHS, we all know that about 99% of them have, um, how do you call it, um, uh, classrooms, have chairs and all those things. Whilst they do with the SHS before they come to uh, the pre-schools as well. All right. And then let me, let, let me pray. Um, I have decided that from today up to Thursday before the Good Friday, I will devote my time at least an hour to be praying for John Mahama um, in it, um, for about an hour, Monday up to Friday. Wow. I'm praying for good health for him. I'm praying that the Lord that he served, the God of, as the of God, sick? I don't know, um, but I pray for him, that God will give him the strength because it will be good that if you are in the house, there will be an old man in the house or old woman in the house that when you need some advice, you need some counsel, um, you can go to him for an advice. Um, I will not wish him death. I will not wish anything bad to him because I wish if John Mahama is in my family, I'll be proud of it. When I walk on the streets, I will say that my uncle is John Mahama. My grandfather is, in John, is John Mahama. So I'll be praying for him. I will not pray that um, somebody should come and take his position. I don't what, what, what you're saying is that he, he's actually going to win the elections. That's what you just said. Is that? You just said that he's I going didn't to say win. he's going to win. I That's said I'm going to pray for him. But if you're praying for somebody... To, so no, I... Rosling, I said... <laughs> There's some mischief in there. <laughs> Rosling, I said that it would be good for us to have an old man or old woman in the house. Okay. So that if you need an advice, you can go to him or her okay. because he's older than you. That is my prayer, that... I pray that today up to Thursday, I'm devoting an hour to fast and pray mm. for him, for God to give him a good health, mm. for God to protect him, for God to shower his blessings upon him, mm. so that if I need him, I can go to him for an advice. Okay. Now let's move on to our GRE issue. The vice president, who is a flag bearer of our party, and the candidates for the party, and I hope and I believe and I trust in God that come next year, on the 7th of January 2025, when we are all at the Independent Square or at the Parliament House to be sworn in, an elected president will be no other person than the Vice President, Dr. Alahaji Mahmoud Baumia. Mm. The last time after he was elected, in February, he did a policy statement. And I remember I came here and I said, look, we are going to discuss the vice president to the end of the election. In this statement that you come out with, which will be for discussion, compared to other candidates, because they don't have any message. But all political parties we discussed. The whole of last week we were discussing John Drummond and Mahamis. What did you discuss about him? Okada. We discussed the Okada. We discussed the exactly. 24 hour Okada. economy. We discussed. You no, know, but the, the 24 hour economy, they are being restricted. That they cannot explain the 24 hour economy because no, some say that when they win, they are going to make sure that in the northern region, where there's no lights, they are going to put, um, how do you call it, street lights in their farms so that the farmers will be weeding in the evening. Some says that somebody who is selling so, so, watches... So, so, Honorable, let me ask you this. GRE, why is GRE actually attacking the vice president in public? The GRE is not attacking the vice president in public. The vice president had opportunity to meet with stakeholders, those in business, Chamber of Commerce, um, the Guta and all that, those group. And... Somebody asked a question about tax. <clears throat> and today, many people complain. Now look, because of our tax system, people try to go to Nigeria, to go, to rather go and ship their things and pass through. But what, even when you go there, when you come, you still will pay tax. And it was, a, it was a view that, look, yes, GRA always go to people, pay your tax. 
Because a target has been given to them. Because a target has been given to them, you need to what? Exceed your target or achieve your target. And I mean, <clears throat> even those who are working in the banks, they'll be calling you, forcing you, come and open an account at my end. All because that person has been giving a target. I remember that I went to withdraw some money from one of my, ba uh, my bank. The manager called us, oh, why are you taking all this money? I said, so, it is not my money, it's somebody's money that I have to do. So no, can you, can the person wait for about a week for me? I said, why? So I've been given a target and I need to achieve this target before the following week. So if we can just hold on, I said, but the money doesn't belong, the person also needs his money. So people always give, this institution give a target. And the vice president is saying that, look, when given the mandate, People are dodging taxes. People are not paying taxes. People feel that, look, I'm not, the, the, the tax that I'm supposed to pay on this pen is too much. So he wants us to open a new chapter where you have no excuse whatsoever. So when he's been given a mandate, on the seventh when he's been sworn in, on the eighth, he's going to give a tax amnesty. Mm. Tax <clears throat> amnesty. <clears throat> for everybody, whether a company, whether individual, and what have you. And then you open a new chapter where you cannot come and complain that, oh, I have to pay this huge amount of money for tax, so therefore I cannot pay. He's going to give a tax amnesty. And when we talk about amnesty, we all understand the word amnesty. So if 2025, you are not going to pay um, how to call it, tax. And in the following year, we start with a new chapter where you have no excuse to come and tell us that, oh, I cannot pay my tax or I'm having some challenge. That's exactly what the vice president is saying. The GRA is of the view that, look, yes, the tax that we are being collecting, it is not a target being set by us. It's a target being set by government. So it is rather government who's supposed to do something about this and not me going because if you have sent me i can't tell you i won't go am i right mm. so so far as i am going then tell me that then don't go we should have had these two bodies actually agree on this particular thing behind closed doors because this is this is the two this is where you come in if we are seeing this with the opposition party and the main party then we we'll understand but we are seeing this. I mean, it, it should tell you, it should tell you that government does not interfere and that does not control okay. any institutions. All right. Let if me the, the vice president comes and speaks his mind, tells you that this is what I think that can be done. GRA is saying that, yes, in as much that maybe we agree with you on this call, we believe that this and this and That's this. That's what GRA said. Huh. They didn't what, say the they agree. The, 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 the statement is quite harsh, though, but I'll come back For to me, you. I don't think it's harsh. Okay. Isha. Oh. Rosalind, good morning to our cherished viewers, and good morning to my co panelists and your good self. I cannot understand, by any stretch of imagination, why His Excellency the Vice President, seeking to be President, would still be engaged in such a promising spree. A promising spree to the extent that prior to becoming Vice President to His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, then as running mate, was the main trumpet. He was the one who espoused and promised to the higher heavens and back what a future MPP government would do. And it was these same promises which formed the bedrock of the campaign for the NPP prior to become, coming into office in 2017. And upon the assumption of office, it is palpably clear that the party with the benefit of hindsight would not have made the kind of promises that they made. They have either abandoned most of the promises they made or they have had to amend or as it were do a certain kind of restructuring mm. as far as putting in place those promises they made to the good people of Ghana are concerned. 
And so, for the vice president who said, uh, then as running mate, that they were coming to move this country from taxation to production, but come into office and is on record to have introduced a lot of draconian taxes. It does not matter the number of taxes. The fact remains that since 2017, the ordinary Ghanaian, whether as an individual or as a businessman, has been inundated with all kinds of taxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that if we were to sit here and try to catalog all of the taxes that have been introduced under the regime of Nana Akufuado and the chairman of the economic management team, His Excellency the Vice President, will use the whole of the time allotted for this program going into that part of the But we also agree with, uh, you know, these taxes because we have to go to IMF and some of the how IMF you, rules and regulations... How do you agree? How do you agree with some of the taxes that are to be introduced? Hmm. How do you agree? Because we are at IMF. No, 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 no. Why? The time that Baumia said they were coming to move the country from taxation to production, we are not under an IMF. But we had COVID and, you know, Russia-Ukraine war. So you want to say that before COVID, before 2020, the NPP from 2017 to 2020 introduced no tax in this country? Is that what you are suggesting? No, that's not what I'm suggesting. Exactly. So COVID Ukraine cannot be the basis. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are <ready>. <laughs> yes. COVID and the Ukraine But, but we also saw that when be... the NPP came to power, they did, they did wave off some taxes. Let's not, let's not ignore that. I asked that question. No, I'm no, I'm, I'm that, just saying that Are you agree. suggesting that... We agree that they did wave off some taxes, right? I laid a certain premise. Okay. No, no, no. I said that... I'm just saying that we do agree. So right? you mean that... You mean that at the time that they were talking about moving this country from taxation to production, no government had ever waived any tax in this country? I'm not asking that question. Exactly. I am so what saying, I'm saying is that, that we are concentrating on when they came to power. Exactly. And when they came to power. Let's and look I'm at saying, the year 2016 and I'm all insisting, the way to the year 2020. I'm insisting. We saw some tax waivers happen. I am insisting. Okay. In spite of those tax waivers, I am insisting that this country between 2017, this government between 2017 and 2020 had introduced certain taxes. Okay. If they had not introduced taxes, but they had increased the threshold of certain taxes. Mm. You understand? Okay. If these are existing taxes and you come, and you, if a tax will say 1%, and you come and you move it to 1.5% or 2% or whatever, <coughs> you have increased the tax. Mm. So the tax burden has increased, even though it's not a new task. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to say is that I am uncomfortable and, and I feel a bit scandalized that the same person who failed on that promise of moving this country from taxation to production is the same person who is now engaged in another promise of coming to, 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 to give tax amnesty or whatever you term it. That is one. Two, if you look at the statement of the GRA Workers' Union, you get to understand that they are unhappy mm. about what the vice president said. They have a certain mandate. Yeah, as very, the very, very as, the unhappy. as the revenue authority. But let's just ask the question. The GRA by itself is not working for itself. How does the GRA benefit from their own work of tax collection mm. and, and other attendant responsibilities? The GRA is a wing supposed to raise these taxes for the usage by the government. Indeed, when GRA raises taxes, the taxes are lowered in accounts on behalf of the government of the day. You understand? And that is why the government has a direct control over GRA. The government appoints the Commissioner General of GRA. The government has a board in place, and the chairman for the board and some members of the board are appointed by the government of the day. <laughs> so the policy direction of GRA is determined by the government. Mm. So if you come, as vice president, wanting to be president, and you try to shift the goalposts and put a certain long existing blame on GRE, who are supposed to be working on your behalf, because you have a direct control over GRE, that is disingenuous, and we would not accept it. So it's, it's more or less like a campaign? Exactly. So where from this point about introducing a flat rate, he lacks ideas. If he had genuine, germane, important ideas to sell to the Ghanaian people, he would not be repeating already existing ideas. And I'm challenging you, go check it out. As we speak, the Ghana Revenue Authority has in place a flat rate VAT tax system. So what's the vice president talking about? This particular flat rate system has been variously criticized. 
Because Honorable here, mm. let's assume, has a business that's worth $100 million. Mm -hmm. My brother Ishak has a business that's worth $10 million. And our cameraman over there has yeah, a business... You talk about me. Oh, I'm the one. Oh, you... Oh. Hey, no, because you're the moderator. Uh, you see, in law, I have business. in law, you cannot be a judge in your own course. Uh, so because you are the moderator, let me know you how say, you, you I have business worth $1 billion. I say amen, no. <laughs> amen, I, I, I pray that for you. But our, our brother, the cameraman, mm. also has a business that's worth, say, $100,000. So if you're introducing a flat rate system where all of them are supposed to pay a tax of, say, 5%, that means he is going to pay more than how much Honorable will pay because Honorable has $100 million as a business. So the critique worldwide against a flat rate system is that it punishes the poor. Okay. It punishes the poor and protects the rich. So already Baumia is telling us his direction. But he that his direction is that he's going to protect his rich cronies and friends. Oh no, I think the he's, captains I, of I, industry. I think what he said was more of you know the 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 SMEs. So it's not the big, big companies that we're going to enjoy the tax waivers, that but rather not what the said. small that companies. That is not what Baumia said. Baumia said that, listen to the story. Yes, please. The vice ahead. president and mm. 2024 flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party has made a declaration of implementing a tax amnesty mm -hmm. for both individuals and businesses when given the not both individuals and businesses. He goes on to talk about all businesses. There's no distinction as to businesses that are making profits in excess of hundreds of millions of dollars over those that are making profits of $1,000, $2,000. He doesn't make that distinction. Okay. So it's important for us to let the vice president know so the that the flat made. rate system is inimical to the development and growth of small industries. It does not support them. It right. doesn't. Because today graduates have no jobs. A graduate tries to set up a small business, let's say 10,000, 20,000 cities, and you charge him 20% on tax. Meanwhile, there are existing multinational companies in Ghana who are already engaged in the practice of capital flights. All their profits, if not most of it, goes out of this country. And you give those people the same tax rate as you are giving the struggling businessman? So, how, in, how, how smart is this idea? So would you have preferred him to have said that he was going to probably increase the tax rate of, uh, you know, the big businesses and reduce the tax rate of the small business? The point is that, just like a lot of Ghanaians, we are tired of even listening to Baumia. <laughs> we are tired. There's no appetite to listen to Baumia. But the MPP is not tired. I'm saying most Ghanaians. The MPP is not most Ghanaians. Majority of Ghanaians, me, the people in Bimbila, the people in uh, Takrade, the people all across the length and breadth of this country, who are tired of the corrupt government of Nanadu and Baumia, we don't want to listen to Baumia again. Mm. But, so, Nothing Baumia says is appealing. So are you in agreement? Nothing Baumia says is trustworthy. Are you in agreement with what the GRA wrote? The workers of the GRA, I support them in total. Especially on the point that they say the, the sweetness of the pudding, you made, made that the, the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. In Hausa, they say, Gawuta Ganama. That means here's the fire, here's the meat. Once there's fire and there's meat, roast it. You are the government in power. For seven years, you have been in charge of the management and running of the Ghana Revenue Authority. You have been in charge of the policy direction of the Ghana Revenue Authority. What is your record? Mm. What is your record? Already, the Ghana Revenue Authority is telling us that in 2013 alone, they have exceeded their target to 113 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Since 2020, Every target that the Ghana Revenue Authority has been given has either been met or surpassed. But you see, that is why I'm asking the question again: mm. Is the Vice President knowledgeable? But has he been briefed? Okay, I'll, if I'll... the Vice President, if the Vice President had been briefed, if he were knowledgeable of the affairs of this country, if indeed he was a competent, capable chair of the Economic Management Team, where the Finance Minister is part, that gives a target to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mm. He would have known that this Ghana Revenue Authority has exceeded its target. Okay, but then again, um, you see, <laughs> this, this thing is uh, a little bit dicey because Ghanaians are complaining about how, you know, GRA goes about collecting taxes. Let me, let me make this one. Personally, I have, I have gone through how they collect their taxes and I wasn't too happy about it. And so, if those you're are, hearing... Those are different issues. If you want to look at the modus operandi mm. of the GRA, 
That's a different matter. All right. Let me, let me read this. But, but it's, it's part of the, the statement they released, though. No, not but let me read it. Let me read this comment coming in. Good morning to all viewers. We are going through a serious hardship in Ghana, and some of the media houses refuse to expose the bad character of the NPP government. Some schools in the Volta region, especially Keta, are eating gariba uh, with hot pepper, and 11 people eat one tin fish. Really? The free SHS is nothing to write home about. I suggest to the MPP government that if they can't do proper free SHS, then they should remove free SHS from the system. If the parents need proper education for their children, they must vote out the wicked MPP government. Abuchi Philip from Keta. Let's see what we have here. Good morning, Rosalind. I'm surprised by the vice president saying he'll be more accountable to Ghanaian. <clears throat> Why not now? Mates don't make an account. Dr. Baumia should know that economics questions don't change, so he should answer the 170 questions posted by Emisa Arthur Solomon Kataman. So. <sighs> Ekufuado and Baumia are never serious. Even the poor teachers that you collected their monies all in the name of giving them those fake laptops. Have you given them the laptops or you have refunded their monies? No serious people. Greetings to Joy Prime. I'm surprised in spite of all the major banner headlines, Rosling chose to discuss Dr. Baumia and Jiari issue. Well, it's part of it. <laughs> what has she sought to achieve? I don't sought to achieve anything, honey. It is part of conversations that is happening. Anyway, I equally pray for Madam Jane Nana Pokwajima because all our central region heroes who have served better positions in the NDC one way or the other passed away mysteriously. I'm glad the comments came from their own big man in the party. Dr. Baumia has already won the 2024 elections. It is possible, Nana Agunes Redru. All right. Good morning, Queen Mother. Today you look fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Indeed, the comment of Baumia on GRA is unfortunate. For my people have a saying that it is only a fool that buys a finger that feeds it. You want to be president, yet you're accusing the institutions responsible for mobilizing funds for your government. Should he become president? In fact, Baumia is not fit for purpose. Uh, the man is already confused and his government will be full of confusion. Tell the MPP man to pray for himself and his family. They need it more. Where was his prayers when poisoned a confirmed meat is killing some people? Master Rahman, Tuna Sola, Tuna Kalba. Good morning to you, the most gorgeous presenter of our time. Oh, thank you. And to your wonderful guest, Madam, to air is human and to forgive us divine. What Mr. Kwesia Hoy said should not be used as basis to judge him. He's a human as well as uh, no. Um, so my appeal to NDC communicators is to be more civilized in dealing with this. Currently, he needs more love than insults. So my Hamza, Zakpala, is what? Zakpalsi? Okay. So I think the NDC, they have actually forgiven him more. Oh. Philemon. Oh, I mean, he's apologized, and uh, it, it, it reflects that he said that in error. Okay. And, uh, Good morning. wish John Mama the very best. Good. God is on the side of the NDC. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Rosie, and your panelists. I hope KMJ is doing marvelously well. He is doing marvelously well. Please let the GRA man know that. Please let GRA know that the VIP is, a, is as confused as his boss. Because how can you tell companies that the very poor who are taxed to collect revenues that they are obstructing their businesses and therefore advise them not to pay? Because he, Baolaya, will give them tax amnesty when voted into his dreamland. No wonder he's best at commissioning toilet and borehole such a mistake and apology for VIP. Tell the MPP rep to pray for Nana Baulaya to live long in order to see how visionary rules in come uh, 2025 JDM government. No wonder Senso Boache couldn't even mention five projects of the useless, clueless, wasteful, fraudulent since capturing Nana Baulaya governments have been able to achieve in the Ashanti region. So tell him Nivia GH, Nestle GH, etc. have all relocated to Ivory Coast, etc. At TB. Kwewu. I'll have Sanzize from uh, Zenu Central, Etibie, sorry, so it's Etibie Kwewu, please pardon me. I'll have Sanzize Zenu, uh, from Zenu Central says, good morning to you all, the GRA is fighting government and Dr. Baomia uh, because of their dishonesty and reckless lamentation because of political power. This is why I'm urging the good people of Ghana to reject the dishonest Baolaya and vote massively for His Excellency JDM, the humble, truthful and experienced <coughs> man whose handwriting is visible for all Ghanaians to see. As for launching of laptops to SHS is a vote buying too, but Omea should uh, deliver teachers' laptop first, which the teachers have paid for and government has refused to give to them. 
Good morning, Roslyn. Please tell the MPP rep that he will explain, explain Taya, with no evidence on the banter between Baulaya and GRE. I didn't get what he said. Cry. Hey, Radisi Besheying. Hey, Radisi Besheying. Okay. <laughs> Roger. All right, Roger. <laughs> Correct. Oh, Zakaria Sujani. Now, Ghanaians have seen the real incompetent managers of our economy moving from taxation to production, knowing Baumia is a liar. They are visionless, bankrupt in ideas. The four more is a disaster. Those say NDC and MPP be are the same is because they are disappointed and bitter confused now. NDC have built plenty of hospitals, e blocks, markets, um, nursing training colleges, universities, Nanado, Baumia have none and have nothing to offer Ghanaians. And 2024, if the NDC not to declare winner, no way for incompetent MPP vote Mahama come 2024. Greetings, Honorable uh, Greetings, Henry of Sayakoto, Dr. Echoes Gabra. Good morning to you. The debate over the relative strengths and weaknesses of the presidency versus parliament is a complex and multi fasted one but systems have their advantages and disadvantages and the effectiveness of each system depends on a variety of factors including the country specific political culture history and social context so ultimately the key to successful government lies in finding the right balance of powers between the presidency and parliament to ensure accountability efficiency and representation of the political system Good morning, Rosalie. You are looking very African this morning. Thank you so much. Indeed, black is beautiful. Honestly, the taxes on this country is too much. If Baumia can really do something, then when he's elected to 1835, he should start it now because yeah, awa kano dano osroso so Ghanaians are suffering. Mr. Fantastic from Akiyob Oda. Nanado is to launch one lap one to the one laptop to later today. You cannot feed SHS students and you want to buy them laptops. What is the sense in this? This is another means to steal the state purse. Also from Kumasi. <laughs> um, good morning to Dr. Grace. I am Sudan Kwa Inkami MP and hope of for Isikadu Kentan constituency. It's ridiculous for incompetence about me to criticize GRE. Meanwhile, it's uh, the same government who sends GRA to go and sit at various shops and harass their workers. Ah, I can't think far. Mr. Economics in speeches and not practical enough is enough. Albert in Kojokrum, Isikadu Kentan. Kentan, okay, okay, we we'll wish you happy birthday. Please, a picture, I have them. I wish, please wish them for me. Okay, happy birthday. Um, see, NPP uh, does not have any better thing to offer Ghanaians. Talk of free laptops to SHS students is just because of votes. This is indirect way of vote buying. The vice president is now saying that when he's given the nod, he's going to give local businesses tax amnesty. What is he talking about? Is he not the leader of the economic team? That's he not role, play role in this damaged economy. Whatever he says is palpable, mischievous. So Dr. Baumia told her that they are going to move the nation from taxation to production. And now what happened in the nation is being swallowed with taxes. Baumia lacks substantive ideas to the people of Ghana. Good morning, Madam Host. Please, uh, did you ask the MPP man to discuss about Mahama? He should pray for his government. Mahama don't need his prayer. Any news about Mahama? The communicators of MPP are happy as elderly man like him doing for him. Okay, I don't understand this one. <laughs> I don't understand this one. Alaji Hamza Pick Farm. Good morning, Rosalind. Dr. Baumia must be told in plain language that he should stop insulting the intelligence of Ghanaians and credit us with the little respect we, he, we deserve in this country. For God's sake, GRA does not set target for itself. Target for GRA is set for from the Ministry of Finance in consultation with the economic management team where Dr. Baumia is the head. So what is Dr. Baumia talking about? Dr. Baumia is simply telling people to stop paying taxes now because they have it at the back of their mind that when Dr. Baumia comes to power, they will be granted tax amnesty. Dr. Baumia is a danger of the economic survival of this country. Dr. Baumia never again. Honorable, I mean, hearing all these comments coming in, uh, do you think Ghanaians are confused? Uh, just three minutes. Oh, you didn't do three minutes? Oh, just three minutes. You didn't do three minutes. Oh, I timed it. No, I timed you. Oh. I timed you. You did ten minutes. Because... Uh, Rosalind, one last point anyway, just one last point on the same issue. You see, despite the, 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 the massive efforts that the Ghana Revenue Authority and the revenue they have generated over the years, even from 2000, 2020 till now, either meeting their target or exceeding it, this government, as of 2023 alone, the public debt of Ghana, 
accrue to 610 billion cities. 610 billion Ghana cities has been the public debt of Ghana. And we have to split this by the population of Ghana. Rosalind, how many people are in your house? Um, Let's assume there are four people in your house. You, Mr. Uh, Feli, and two other people. That means each one of you owes 18,500 Ghana cities. Multiply that by four, and that is a debt that your household, just your household, owes by no fault of yours, mm. just by the reckless leadership of Baumia and Anado. Yo. You owe that amount of money. In my home, if there are five of us, 18,500 by the number of people in my house, and that is how much we owe the Republic of Ghana. Doctor by ba the reckless leadership okay. of Anado and of Baumia. Dr. Baumia will say anything to win votes. For him, lying to vote, uh, for votes is a smart thing to do. One district, empty warehouse. One village, dry dams. Free, expensive SHS. And many more such lies. Ghanaians have wised up Patrick from Accra. All right, so you can still send in your messages? Okay. Hey, there are messages here. Let's see. All right. We'll just come back and read some more messages later. And um, because we promised, we promised our viewers that we'll read most of your messages. So we'll see what, what, we, what we have. All right. Anyway, let's um, come back into our topic of the campaign promises. Now we are hearing one laptop, one student, or one student, one laptop. Which is it? So, uh, I mean, it was not going to be a topic, but it looks like most people are commenting on it. And uh, we've also heard... Everyone introduced it. Honorable uh, introduced, introduced it. it. So it looks like people really uh, want to delve right into that one. To that. Uh, so we'll reply that one. Mm. And <laughs> then uh, let's not forget that, uh, you know, the current flag bearer for the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, has also spoken and he's telling the president and you know the government in power to make sure they pay the NS nss people because they are being old since november now anytime we project our messages we actually do get them sending messages telling us that they are being old and they want their money since november so november december january february march five months honorable the, the laptop you the brought first it you talked about um those testers, mm. all the people that you you read their you read their message, they are NDC people. So what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> they are they are they are, um, they are Ghanaians oh. across. Everywhere. When you are talking, I just kept quiet. Please let him. Oh, I can't I can't interject you. Please, please. Because I want the thing to flow. That's why when I talk, I always keep quiet. So please keep quiet. Let me talk. speaking. All the people that you read their message, they are NDC people. Because at the end of the day, your mama is coming. So what shows that <laughs> there are people that discerning people that they understand issues? Well, my viewers are discerning people. Yeah. Fine, I'm sorry. But I'm saying that these are NDC social media people. That credit has been bought for them to, for, to, them to send messages. Is that how he's reducing your Please. viewers to? Please. Oh, on, uh, Philemon, oh no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm angry on behalf of the viewers. No, no, Philemon. You can't say that about the viewers. Viewers who are listening and you call them NDC people, they are reflecting Philemon, let me, let me, let me, Philemon, if you... No, 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 no. I think that I give the viewers some respect. Oh, give the viewers some respect. When he starts, he, 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 he will please. not talk. Oh. Please continue. When he starts, he won't, he won't talk. Honorable, I'm assuring please you for continue. that. Please continue. So if we give NDC social media people credits to this morning to send messages, what do you expect? So for me, I don't mind about their comments. Honorable, please continue. Then it talks about um, the flat rate. That's the vice president talked about. When we did, that's why I said that, look, John Mahama was elected last year, March, last year. One year, he has been in, uh, as a candidate. Tell me one th sensible thing, or one thing that he has said, that when given the mandate again, is going to do. The Apart from, economy. Oh, what is about the, the it? Can tech. he himself, the he, he, John Mahaham himself, cannot even tell you what exactly 24 hours means. He himself. The same applies to your own people. But the they come, ah. Well, no, the last time I asked somebody, a member of parliament, on the ticket of the NDC, to tell me one thing, that they are 24 hour economy that he's talking about, they are coming to do. One thing about, you know, this 24-hour economy that people will say, or because I don't even want to base it on politics. I want to base it on what Ghanaians will say, mm -hmm. is that when you go abroad, 
We see it happening. So why can't it happen here? So tell me, which of the institutions in Ghana that you are going to run a 24 hour economy? Tell me. Which ones can't you? Just tell me, give me. You said when you go travel abroad. Yeah, yeah. When you travel abroad. Jerry can run 24 hours. Why can't they? And who told you DRA is not running 24 hour economy now? Are they? Who told you they are not running? We, we just... Who told you you cannot fat, you, 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 you cannot. Um, how do you call it? Process your VAT and, 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 and all your taxes when you are sitting at home. Who told you you cannot do that? No, that's not 24 economy. And so you work to GIA office, is that what they are saying? That's different, yes. So you work to GIA office? People are in the office. Ah. People are working, Please they are me. earning money. Don't, don't, don't. But don't, that's what 24 don't, economy is. Don't, don't, if I, don't if, explain if, if I live, like no, NDC person. No, I'm not this. explaining as an NDC person. <laughs> I'm explaining because, as a logic no. person because if I go abroad, where I've lived abroad before, and I have worked 24 have, hour economy before, I just want to say. Rosalind, are you not working 24 hours here? No. Like, I'm Are you not working 24 honorable, hours here? Honorable. Is the office not working 24 hours? But it's not It's not all institutions that do it. So, that's a, so you mentioned GIA, and what else? Uh, the students, students uh, go to school 24 hours. Recently, we heard that uh, the, you know, the, what's it called, the judiciary has started a, a shift system as well. And they said, so they said they do it at, at, at midnight. Is that what they are saying? No, but they started a shift they system. They gave a time frame. Night. Yeah. They gave a time frame yeah. from 9 to 1, from 1 to 5. Does it end at uh, 11 o'clock p.m. or 10 o'clock p.m.? When the judge... Ah, but when the judge issued a statement, did they say that they are going to end at 11 p.m. or 10 p.m.? Did they say that? So I'm asking, which of the institutions are they going to run? It's not running 24 hours that they want to run 24 hours. We can have the factories run 24 hours. Ah, who told you which factory doesn't run 24 hours? A lot of factories don't. Then you don't, then you, then, then you don't know. Oh, no, but a lot of factories the, close up. Tell me the years. factory that don't run to the... I'll go and look for that factory. Okay. Just give me one. Okay. No, no, okay. Just give me one right now. I'll get it for you. Don't worry at all. Rosalind. Ah, Continue. So, if the vice president is saying that, look, my people at Abosoka, somebody comes with a 40 feet contract, the same amount of money he pays, the one who comes with a 20, uh, 20 feet container mm. pay the same amount of money because of the things that are in. So the point is that going forward, there's going to be a flat rate on um, a container. So if you have a 20 feet container, I'm not going to pay the same amount as somebody who have a 40 feet, feet container because they are two different things. Mm. He said that, look, when mandate is given to me, I'm going to make sure that those that have backlogs of tax that they have not paid, I'm going to give the tax amnesty for them to what? But you see, the, 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 the complaint is not from even Ghanaians. The, the issue happens to be GRA telling the vice president, don't say what you said. It doesn't matter. I, 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 are they are not Ghanaians. They are from Libya. Who appointed them? Is that, ah, who appointed them? Who appointed the boss at GRA? Was the response coming from the boss of GRE? Ah, who, who, no, was who, the response coming who from the grant, boss of GRE? Who grants it? Who no, grant it? Was the, was the response coming from the boss Honorable, of GRE? Who grants it? Who grants what? Who grants the permission for these things to come out? Ah, so you, you, so you, there is a boss. So, so, so yeah, are you telling me that? Eh? There's so, a board. Are you telling me that? There's a board Presidium. that was, there's a no, no, board that was elected by the government. Are you telling me that? Are you telling me there, that? There are, there are rules and there are, there are constitutions that bind the GRE. Let's not forget it. Now, if this constitution is binding the GRE and there are laws in there with regards to collection and you have the vice president coming to tell you that we are going to forgo these laws and we are going to start something else. Of course, GRE has spoken because these GRE people are on our necks. I had an event. They were sitting there. They collected the money. Money. They didn't care how much I made. What they did was they calculated. Listen, I didn't make anything, but the amount of money GRA took from me, I didn't make any profit. Why? Because they quoted law to me. Now we are having the vice president come to us and tell us that I'm going to wave this off. Did he have a conversation with GRA? He done. Yes. Who started sending your program to the Chris YouTube, right? Uh huh. He started the program. <laughs> As in what? As the program, he, you told him that you are bringing me Philemon and then uh, incomes general secretary. No, he has put people in place. So, so, so. So if question, so, so the if, people so, that he has so put if, in so if there's a problem, mm -hmm. if there's a problem, I will say that it's question who have caused it. Is that what they are saying? No, if there's a problem, you speak to ah, my producer. Because you are saying and that, my producer will speak to So you are saying, so you are saying that 
The GRA Senior Staff Association or the GRA Workers Union who issue a statement cannot issue a statement on their own. We are saying that is the, the GRA boss or the board uh, executives who gave them the money to who, issue the statement. Is that what you are saying? Who governs GRA? I don't understand you. This no. governs. So you are saying Who so, governs so, GRA? so so you see, that's where you have a problem. That the workers at G Harry cannot on their own issue a statement. But rather, it is the G Harry boss who asked them to issue. Is that what you are saying? Who put these workers on the street to collect their monies? Who put the workers? Yeah. Is the G Harry who put the work the, the workers on the street to go into the money? Who 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 the GRA boss. Who gave them? Who gave them the? Uh, ah, the a target the, has target. been. That's why I said target a target has been, has been given target the GRA from the is Ministry from of Finance. Good. It does not matter. So are you saying that? So whatever goes on in GRA, the workers have no right to talk about it. Is that what you are saying? That's not what I'm saying. That's what you are saying. So if this, they think that look, mm -hmm. as workers, yes, the vice president has spoken, mm -hmm. but we also believe that yes, what you have said, mm -hmm. we also have a contrary view of what you have said. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think that the 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 the, the GRA boss and then uh, the board chairman obtain uh, 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 the ask them that go and respond to the vice president. They are on their own. We are in this country where senior staff association, where workers union you know, have been coming out to speak their mind. Today, somebody has spoken. They say, "Oh, government, their uh, 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 their bosses are there and they are they are, they are responding." If they have this same, if they have kept quiet, it will be another issue. I mean, what kind of double standard is that? So people cannot ex express their views. Is that what they are saying? But did you because it's a government institution, they cannot express their views. Mm. As I'm speaking with you, teachers are on strike. Are you saying that because teachers are on strike, the Minister of Education shouldn't talk about it? Or the, the, the teachers have no right to talk about their conditions of service. Is that what you are saying? No, they talk about it. But exactly. But that's not so this, this is a policy that the vice president thinks that when giving the money, I'm going to do. The GRA staff also have a contrary view. That this, what you are saying you want to do, we believe that mm. the target given to us that you said that we are harassing people, the target is coming from the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm to our bosses, that we should be able to raise this amount of money from January 1st to 31st of December. We also believe that, from what you have said, that you are going to grant a tax amnesty when you get the mandate, then people will be refusing to be paying their taxes from this time up before you become the president. So we are of the view that, look, your statement, it should be A, B, C, and D. I mean, what is wrong with it? What is wrong with it? But honorable, it, there's everything wrong with it, isn't it? I see nothing wrong with it. You don't see anything? I don't wrong see with anything it? wrong because okay. for, 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 for the fact that the GRA workers because what can, the, can, what, what can GRA come out boldly and say that, yes, indeed, for what you are saying, we believe that if, if you are done it this way or the target is not from us, if you are asking that you don't, don't go and collect taxes, we are fine with it. But you have given us a target that we should go and take this money from people who are not paying taxes. And we are saying that by that virtue, the measure that we have put in place is an harassment. Then? But, but I'm saying everything is wrong with it in the sense that, in the sense that, and I'm coming to you, Ishaf. I, you know, I'm saying that everything is wrong with it in the sense that you are the certain government. You are given, <laughs> listen, honorable, you are given a promise. What, the statement that they have released is making people say that he's given an empty promise. And so probably you could have actually engaged him directly by telling him that I'm looking at the kind of statement you have made, but if we can do it A, B, C, D, because he's making him more popular. No. Who is Ro Rosalind, no. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me, let me come no. to Ishak on this. You ask me a question, uh, uh, so let me finish. Uh, 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 you, 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 you know, it wasn't, right, we'll let come me come to, to Ishak, we'll come I'll come, to come you. back we'll come to, you. to you. It's just for people to you know see, that. I've spoken like 15 minutes. So. You see, Rosalind, Rosalind, you see, I think that we are missing the point mm. here. With all due respect, the GRA Workers Union, I believe, wouldn't have had any problem mm -hmm. with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia if he was merely making a promise whether he believes in that promise or not, he's entitled to express was a promise, more or less, it's about his opinion or what he thinks should be done. But 
on the back of that, he, is, uh, he has apportioned blame mm -hmm. to GRA. The conduct of GRA officials is being assigned as the reason for which there is a backlog of unpaid taxes. And that is what the GRA Workers Union is responding to. You understand? Mm -hmm. Whatever reasons would have, would have accounted for the backlog of unpaid taxes, you could have, as it were, engaged in that promise to the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry without necessarily going a step further to try to absolve your government and yourself from it, from that liability, mm -hmm. and attributing it entirely to the GRA work, to GRA. That is why this particular statement has been released. So the people are not attacking actually the promise. They are trying to defend their work. Their work. And what they are supposed to do. You understand? And so for me, it's not about whether the promise can stand the test of time, whether Dr. Baumia has the right to make that promise or not, but he cannot impugn the integrity, the professional integrity of such a colossal group of people who have a certain mandate, a very critical mandate, as far as revenue collection is concerned, mm. and we expect that they should not respond. The people are not going into the, the, the merits or otherwise of that promise. But as far as their conduct is concerned, as far as their work is concerned, as far as their schedule is concerned, they would have to respond and set the record straight. And that is how I am looking at it. Mm. We may decide to play politics or whatever with it. These guys are not engaged in any politics. They are entitled to let us understand why Dr. Mahmoud Baumia shouldn't have said what he said, not in terms of the promise, but in terms of the blame he's trying to absolve himself of and rather attribute it to them. But it's making him unpopular, though. Making who unpopular? It's not. It's making, did you say popular or unpopular? Unpopular. has always been unpopular. Unpopular. Of course, we are expressing our opinions here. That's your mind. Yes. Why are you saying he's always been unpopular? Because he's been popular. Why, is it the first time Baumia has made a promise that has backlashed? Is it the first time? Is it the first time Baumia has made a promise that has received a lot of backlash? A backlash? No! And so for me, this is all come to add up to the litany of such, of such promises that, that, that have received a lot of backlash in the past. It's out, the verdict is out there. <laughs> I may have the opportunity to come and sit here and say it. Get onto the street, listen to the ordinary people, the kinds of things <laughs> they say about our vice president. And so for me, GRA workers, they are entitled to, to, to respond the manner they did. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, he's entitled to make the kind of promise he made. It's left onto the good people of Ghana to look in between and make the best judgment that would serve their interests as citizens. Okay. Philip. All right, yeah. Uh, the Honorable Member sought to suggest that the NDC has no message. I think that the very people he sought to disrespect, the viewers at home, Oh, would agree with me. Oh, please. The very people he sought to disrespect are viewers at home. <laughs> would agree with me. And anybody that listens to the media, monitors whatever happens, would agree with me that the NDC, even with, before our manifesto has been launched, John Mahama has variously stated some of the policies he will be implementing. Number one, there's a 24 hour economy, our flagship, which will happen. There's the introduction, there's the re establishment <laughs> of the sinking fund. Money that we left that day came to expend, nyafu, nyafu. The sinking fund will be re established. Banks that know, were no that banks whose licenses were revoked, you banks no which message. lost, which which created unemployment for several thousands of people what to cost, the extent what of what practicability. The, the, what, the what NDC the will give the them back their licenses what, what, and they will employ. We have number three, your, 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 your party already. Wait, to the viewers you disrespected heard no. you when you were saying you were going to heckle me. The viewers heard you. Yes, the viewers heard you. Give you information. This is an honourable member of parliament, member of the MPP, whose agenda this morning is to people that are your government who went to take money from the The viewers you disrespected are watching you. The viewers you disrespected are watching you. Members of your party. Let him land. Members. Of part, some of them, some of them, even the members viewers of the you disrespected are watching you. So they collapse the banks. The very viewers you disrespected are watching you. Continue. The NDC collapse the banks. The viewers you disrespected are watching you. The NDC, the NDC is promising your, 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 a ten billion US. dollar. Your social media investment in, in the big push 
which is a grand agenda to help businesses survive. There's also a $3 billion investment by private-led companies to make sure ICT Masa. is expanded. We all know that we are at the information age. Oh, ICT really? Now you understand crucial. that. <laughs> also, there's the importance placed on the review, the completion of the review of the 1992 Constitution. Then this is the only party that has come out to say that we are going to ensure that as Grasha is script, the MPP has not had the moral courage so to tell the Ghanaian people that they will script ex-Grasha. <laughs> Honorable has sat on the show and told us how much he got as ex-Grasha. The NDC is saying that when we come, it is not possible that a member of parliament goes to parliament for just four years and is earning much more than my mother, a teacher, who has taught for over 30 years, is getting after her service to this country. Do you know the that? NDC is so saying so that we shall scrap you know. off Esgrasha. Do you know? Do you know? The NDC is also saying. 1993. No, saying. Do you know the 1993 members of parliament no, 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 of your end? No, no, no. I in court today, gentlemen. asking for Esgrasha. Oh. I said, 1993 members of parliament. In 1992, we've got members of parliament are in court today. You are not saying that we are in court today. Can we have some decorum, please? You are in court today. Can we have some decorum, please? He himself is taking... Honourable, no. Honourable, please. He himself is taking... Honourable, please. Today. Philemon is on the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Philemon. The fact of the matter is that he started by saying we have no message. Now that the message has been message. ruled out, he's now attacking the message. What the fact of the matter have? remains that the NDC is saying that data, ah. internet, electricity bill, that MPs, ministers, top government officials are benefit. We shall scrap it. And that's not, because we care about the sensitivities of the people. So, so with regards to... We care about the sensitivities of the people. You don't even know. Right. You don't even have... Let, let, let me see if I have some... I don't know. Let me see if I have some comments coming in. Let me see if I have some comments. Who told you MPs are paid? After all the... Anyway, but let's actually... I've not got an opportunity to talk. With regards to... With regards to... Honourable. Lie bill. Honourable. Honourable, please. You don't even know. Gentlemen. Officials. Well and all Gentlemen. Go and I am going to read comments, mess. and I really need some silence in the room so I can read my comments. Thank you. Take your fast friend. Please give me the comments. Thank you so much. Um, we are trying to get the comments coming in, and then I've got the we comments can... will come, so let's go. <laughs> will come. The comments will come. The comments will come. Philemo, please land, and then I can... Yeah, so there are yes, several... Land I Honorable. <laughs> Philemo. You see, the fact of the matter remains that Baumia is the most discredited politician ever in the history of Africa. We once heard about one Jacob Zuma in South Africa who was discredited. But I mean, Baumia has... T he's now topped the charts. I know no leader anywhere in Africa, not even the dictators. Not Paul Bia of Cameroon, not a, 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 a Faunya Singbe of Togo. All of these people even have more credibility than Baumia. Have more credibility than Baumia. The NDC's promise to the people of this country is that we shall depart from corruption that has characterized the MPP government. We shall depart from nepotism. We shall not make that mango or some other part of the north or the hometown of, you know, the top officials, the center of development, like someone is doing in Chibi. We shall not do that. Okay. We so shall ensure that the resources of this country are equitably dis distributed. All that right. someone from Bunkurgu, someone from uh, Isiyama in the western region, someone from <coughs> Bupe, someone from Sogakope, is equitably receiving the resources of this country. It should not be the case that only Achims and some members of this government, of this country, are the ones benefiting from the resources of this country. Enough of the corruption. Okay. And then nepotism. All right. Um, let's not forget, let's not forget that today, asked. actually, hey. there's going to be the launch of the One Student, One Laptop, which is actually a Meanwhile, good they don't have food to eat. You, they don't have food to eat. You are launching an um, ICT can, project. Can, can, whatever I, please, ICT can I please project. speak? No food to eat. Can I please speak? Thank please, you so please much. Please proceed. So there's going to be the launch of the One Student, One Laptop happening today. It's actually a very good initiative. And so if it goes well, all students will benefit from this. Uh, Akonsi Gariba from Tamale says, uh, Good morning, Rosalind. Please, don't you think the NDC man is child with sharp teeth? How can the NDC man question Alaji, Dr. Baumia, as intelligence? May God have mercy for the NDC man. If he does not understand what he's talking about, Baumia is possible. Good morning, our guest in Akreko from Garu. Please tell the MPP people to pay the national service allowance and stop their scam tricks. Uh, it was going to be one of our topics, but unfortunately, time will not permit us to do that. Um, if the MPP man says he will not mind our comments, it's okay. And let's wait for December 7th. Exactly. You will please. smell pepper exactly. also from Kumasi. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Madam Hosa Meganian, based in Nigeria, uh, I'm not NDC or MPP. Why Mahama? Why not Kofor? It's every time in Kofor, it's government. Hey, <laughs> we like that you send us the messages, but it's a bit difficult to read it. So please pardon me if I, I can't read it. Alasan Suse um, Zenu, Madam Rosalind, please, please, please. The MPP man in the studio should be careful. 
the way he described we the viewers with their disrespectful character and know that the comments are the reality on the ground when a liar is speaking he or she forgets that one one listens half sense okay <laughs> Honorable, oh, it looks like the, the viewers are not happy with you. And I said they are NDCs. No, uh, I think you uh, should apologize. So, so, I think apologize, apologize for what? Are they oh, not no. NDC people? It's oh, not all of how? 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 do you say that? It's not all of them. I said, how do you, how do you At the end of the day, the person says that we will be happy yeah, all of them are NDC. We'll no, it's not all of yes, them that all of them are NDC. No, but it's not all of them. are NDC. What is wrong? These are the common people. Because we don't like them as NDC. We like them. But it's not all of them. Honorable. Philemon. I, I think you should be humble and apologize. I'm not saying anything for me to apologize. Honorable and Philemon. I'm not saying anything for me to apologize. Honorable. It's not all our viewers that are... I'm NBC. saying that... These are discerning guys no, absolutely. No, that are watching. Anyway, Rizzly. let me continue. But this man did it. See, I've read a few comments and none of them no, are... All the things that you... All the people that you have mentioned all, since no, the first no, one, no, the second no, one, no, they are no, all... No, no, uh, no. And I've been no, watching no, on the screen no. as well. Good morning, Rosalind. If you are... I've been watching you are NPP well. panelists and you don't say anything <laughs> reasonable to Ghanaians, you realise that gov government has failed, you will see all text messages as NDC members. Yeah. This man, pa, well, I respect him though, but next time he should talk well. Oh, no, but you say, this person is not... NDC ah. <laughs> How do you know? But if I say I said it. This MPP communicator is insulting our intelligence. Do we have to be paid before knowing how we feel? I want to say... Oh, hmm. <laughs> Honorable, they are not happy. The MPP man on your panel is out of touch with reality on the ground. They should avoid exacerbating the anger of Ghanaians with their comments on TV. Apologize, Honorable. Honorable, apologize. people are not happy. You should apologize. Honorable, I'm today, I have apologize. never said anything wrong for me to apologize. That's hey, the arrogance see, of God. I am seeing the reflection of the arrogance of media workers. Honorable. I, I'll describe them as representative of the arrogance of government. It's okay. You, you, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Good morning, Rosalind. Yeah, what you hours? Did you see the arrogance of the MPP man is oh, expecting please. on your show? <laughs> he said he doesn't care about our comments. Come December 7th, we'll see where the power lies. I the driver it. and his mate have not ah. delivered on one teacher, one laptop promise, which is one of the reasons which teachers are on strike. Don't even have they are going to launch another one true. student, it one laptop. True. This is funny from Israel, uh, Mark Bruce Azako. Okay. Ah, okay. Madam Host, the <laughs> nesting trainees are ungrateful to President J Pres to the president. JM cancelled the allowance and Nana has restored it and has paid all remaining just five months and they are complaining. If JM cancel it, they will know their level from Nana Wusu Gosu. Rosie, the NPP man is as confused more than the word confused. Ah, but all these people being called honorable. <laughs> oh, please. He's an honorable. He's a former member of parliament. Don't say that. Once again, it's Sister Rosalind, on behalf of the viewers of Joy Prime, I seriously put my foot down. The NPP man must retract the comments. They brought us credit, and we are NDC. Oh, no, 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 no. If he refuses to retract the comments, we will not view Joy Prime again. Abu oh, that, that's your own Kitta. problem. Honorable. <laughs> Honorable. Honorable. That's your own problem. You can decide to what LYZ is. So, so uh, Nana Aguna Nana Soedru, it's, it's quite strange that, you know, Honorable sitting here is not even of this view, but I don't know why Nana, and Nana will send you a message and always attack presenter. Good morning, once again, you see what I was talking about. The host herself is asking questions and answering them in the same time with her preference. Don't hide your NDC dress under your cloth and then come and host program, which is supposed to be fair and not biased. Let's see your true colors, <laughs> Madam Rosalind. If... After all, everybody knows NDC doesn't read, so they misinterpret everything they hear. In every situa institution in Ghana, we have politicians who, one way or the other, support a political party. Nana, really? Hmm. One thing I like about NDC and its leader, JM, is the ability to accept opinion views. Kwesi Ahoy knew uh, only JM could accept anything thrown at him. If he thinks he's a man, he should try this with Nanado and his name will be sorry. Madam Rosalind, please, where did you get this so-called honorable? This is the man who wants to pray for JM. JM has suffered. Please, is he the one of the MPP men? Thank God we are in the final year. With God, the Egyptians we are seeing today, we will see them no more. 9th January 2025, Master Raman Tuna Sola. Uh, Good morning, Rosalind, Queen of the Airwaves. If a member of parliament <laughs> can sit on national television to spit unprintable words this morning, he don't deserve to be called honorable. Ghana don't have future. The NPP is full of confused human beings. NPP never again. God will not allow this to happen. Honorable, please. My views, my, 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 my viewers, Rosalind, I beg you. I didn't so, see, see, I didn't see Honorable anything has been coming here. Honorable, you let me land. Please, viewers, I'm begging you. Honorable has been coming here for, it's almost one year. 
and honorable is not he's never disrespected uh, our should, viewers should let me him. land let you me should let him apologize let himself. me land philemon please oh. but what I, what? honorable has <laughs> never disrespected any of our viewers i can say that on record and I know that probably it was just an emotional statement. Honorable will take up the mantle <laughs> and speak himself. But I know for sure that Honorable is not disrespectful. That I know for sure. And I know for sure that Honorable respects every single viewer. So Honorable, please say something to the viewers for me. I beg you, Honorable. Leslie, to be honest and sincere with you. I beg you. I didn't say, what did I say wrong? What I said was, you asked a question. You are still justifying this. Philomon, let him lie. You, you said, hey, Philomon, no, you apologize to the viewers. You said, you said the testers are not happy about the vice president, um, how to call it. And I said, oh, all the people that you read their messages, they are all NDC oh, testers. They because they end up by saying that JM is coming. Okay. So if I say that they are NDC testers, what is wrong with it? Oh, no. There are people that are not NDC. Ah. Okay, so it's obvious he doesn't so, want to so, apologize. So, okay. No, the people are so so. Then, so if you are not NDC, you don't want to apologize. So if you are not okay. NDC, then why do you add that? He doesn't want to apologize. Why do you, Let's why do you add that JM is coming? Even after you are not NDC, the ball to you. You have refused to apologize. Let's I said if you are not NDC, why did they add that JM is coming? This is a reflection of if arrogance you, if, in if, government. If you, if you send the arrogance of this government, and you not this is a reflection to it. Okay, gentlemen. I will not respond to it Gen in that in equal gentlemen. manner. Honorable. But you said that. Honorable, honorable. Yes, honorable. Rosalind. We have seen a few messages that have come in that didn't say anything about you JM talk, is no, coming. No, 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 please. So we you could have gone on that one. tangent. You but asked anyway, about the previous honorable, one. Honorable, you know what? Let's just, let's just, you know, eat the oh. humble pie and apologize to us. Oh, yes, you don't force him. Anyway, let's, let's Philip Abochi says, good morning to all the viewers. We are going through a serious hardship in Ghana and some of the media houses refuse to expose the bad character of the NPP government. Some schools in the Volta region, especially Keta, are eating gariba with hot pepper. I think I've already read this one. It was on WhatsApp. So if I could get the next message coming in. Daniel Akbalio, good morning, Joy Prime. Kindly display your WhatsApp number on the screens for us. Oh, Daniel, sorry about that, okay? Um, we are really sorry that we couldn't display it. Forgive us. Aaron Bebakoko Komisa, I think I've read Aaron's own as well. Um, it was on WhatsApp, okay, Daniel Akbalio. Uh, Dr. Baumia has lost his credibility with respect to economic management and proper governance, and that has resulted to the use of blame games and needless propaganda to win power. What he has forgotten is that Ghanaians have tasted of his bad governance and have seen how he has been exposed following his failed promises. Honorable Ebenezer should reserve his energy this morning. No amount of explanation can justify the failure of Dr. Baumia. Ghana needs JDM back. So Daniel Akbalio. From Sunday, it's an NDC person. You say I'm lying. You say Ghana needs JM back. Is he not an NDC person? No, it's not. Ah, it's not. He didn't. Why didn't he say Ghana need uh, John, uh, uh, Bernard Mona? Why didn't he say Ghana need uh, uh, Alan Chemanting? Why didn't he say Ghana need Apalu? Why he said Ghana need JM? So if I say yeah, the maybe, person is the NDC, maybe the person feels that JM is the right exactly. person. So I that saw, doesn't mean that the person. So is so I also see the person as an NDC person. Okay. I don't see anything wrong anyway, with it. I didn't insult anybody. Gentlemen, I have to thank you for being here this morning. Actually, time will not permit us to go on, but that has been all. It's been quite heated. I haven't, I, I, I haven't been too well today, but Honorable has really taken me to a different level this morning. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Okay, uh, Philemon, please, quickly. And oh, then, uh, the, 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 the uh, All Africa Games has come to an end. Uh, One minute, oh. The closing ceremony was quite nice. Uh, but we cannot forget to know that the days of accountability are now. Now, the days of accountability. We do not forget that they said they had spent 17 million to renovate uh, diaspora, the new hostels at the University of Ghana, when the total cost of that project itself was no more than $20 million. But this MPP government under the sports minister has said they spent 17 million to renovate a certain sports village. I mean, these are the days. We shall look into the matters and all the instances of corruption, the excesses, the failure, the disrespect meted out to our athletes. We shall look into them. Okay. We have not forgotten the corruption they have, they have perpetrated. We shall Thank look you. into those Thank issues. Thank you so much. Aoudou Ishak? Well, Rosalind, I am... I, <clears throat> Today you've been between... <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised to say the least about the fact that this government is still engaged in this, this issue of one this and one that. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a one laptop per student at this point in time. Even in the nation's capital, we are suffering energy crisis. Supply to our homes and industry is not regular, very erratic. 
We are talking about the fact that a lot of these, there are a lot of rural communities not connected to the national grid. Some of those who are even connected to the national grid, they owe ECG and other power producers to the extent that they are being threatened with disconnection because this government has not been able to release subventions. And we are rather, as usual, putting the, 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 the cart before the horse, or how do you say it? We don't get our priorities right. We do not need a one laptop per student at this point in time. It is necessary, but not now, considering the exigencies and the circumstances. All right. Thank you so much, Awudu. Honorable. Rosling, as a government, we are focused mm. and we are determined to educate Ghanaians so that in future, the poor man's son or daughter in a village who cannot read and write can have access to education. Today, there are people that joined since we started this uh, free education. People who cannot take care of, of their children now have their children <coughs> in a senior high school. And some have had the opportunity to travel outside the country to further their education. If it has not been free education, I can tell you that we are going to have a lot of children walking on the street begging. Thanks to Donado and the Vice President Dr. Amon Babumia to introduce this. Rosalind, and let me say this. You have about I, 30 seconds to go. I don't do politics of insult or tarnaging image and reputations. I speak on issues. I say it just as it is. <clears throat> if my comments by some of the testers see it as a disrespect to them, I'm sorry. But what I want to say is that irrespective of our political affiliation, irrespective of our political colors, we should say it just as it is. The last time I told you that somebody told me that, look, he listened to and he watched Telly. The way and manner you ask your question, he find it very difficult to know where you belong in a political circle. How many of your hosts and how many of the stations that me, I, I told you about some of you, even in your own multimedia here. <laughs> it's because of the way you present yourself. It's because of the way you'll be doing, people have um, certain perceptions about you. So for me, I, I want to say, I'm not disrespecting them, but what I want to say that, yes, if what I said, they find it very offensive, I am sorry. But That's we should speak objectively yeah. and say the things just as it is. Honorable, thank you. thank you so much. And uh, finally, Honorable has apologized. And this is what I say maturity is all about. Thank you all so much for watching the show this morning. After Actually, so much pressure. Um, <laughs> After so much pressure. Hey, Philip. He did not willingly thank apologize. You for but I'm, he did. See, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm still <laughs> fasting for Jay. Yes, I'm, I'm still so fasting for Jay. This has been a news flash segment. Uh, Honorable Ebenezer Nati represented the NPP. I will do Isha represented PNC. Please vote for Awudu Ishak to become your General Secretary PNC. Please vote for this man. He's vibrant. He can do well, the He's job. not contesting with anybody. He's going on a post. No, no, no. No, he's no. contesting. We are about four so far. And then um, yeah, Philemon yes. and oh, La for your and La and and the <laughs> 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 We'll take a quick break. Up next is what's trending with Shola Adeyemi. Do stay with us. <laughs>